to Astronomy for Beginners, and I'm Marty, and today, uh, today's guide that I'm going to cover is finder scopes. On my last guide, what I did was basically set up your mount. Now, um, to ensure that you're going to have finder scope is equally just as important uh, to ensure that you're going to be able to find the uh, objects in the night sky and also to uh, enable you to do uh, uh, accurate uh, star alignment. Now, the things I do need to highlight is, is um, finder scopes are a, a, a basically an aiming device that it allows you to aim your main scope towards the, the, the object you want to view. The varieties of finder scopes, right? but they all work virtually the same. Okay, They all work virtually the same. Um, first off I'm going to go off is um, you've got your normal standard uh, uh, 9x50 uh, finder scope. Um, this usually, I mean, uh, this usually have an eyepiece, but this one is usually built for um, my, uh, as my guider, so basically I've got a guide camera that fits on there. But usually there's an eyepiece in there, and in there there's like a, a crosshair built inside, and you've got your adjustment screws which you need to um, align the finder scope to the main tube. All right. um, the finder scope is um, pretty basic, it's just basically a small refractor and it's got a wide field of view. Um, you can get in different sizes, I mean this is a 9 by 50 millimeter uh, uh, finder, basically it's 9 times modification and 50 millimeter objective lens here. Uh, you can get smaller ones uh, by 6 by 30 millimeter, which is 6 times by uh, 30 millimeter objective lens, and you can get even smaller ones than that. Uh, to be honest with you, as 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 me as an experienced astronomer, I found that the 9 by 50 finder scope is the one you should go for because uh, they give they have enough light uh, gathering. So you can see all the faint objects when you're trying to align, uh, trying to find uh, objects in the night sky. Uh, the 9x50 is arguably the, the best fire scope to use. Uh, anything smaller, I mean for a lot of guys who have small telescopes, a 6x30 is adequate, but it's not ideal. Um, a 9x50 is a good upgrade from there. Uh, obviously you get two different varieties. Alright, you just get a straight through with the normal eyepiece that attaches on here. Or, you get something like this, which you have a prism or a, a mirror, which will flip the, uh, the view uh, for um, easy viewing. So, you, especially for reflectors where you're looking at part sky and it's an angle and you try to lean over there. But look, luckily, this helps you a lot. Alright, so we can get some with a a right angle view. Um, also, have you noticed with uh, some finders, um, they also focus. So usually you focus here, right? There's no focusing at this end at the eyepiece. You actually focus at the objective lens, and then there's a lock screw here. And um, quite a simple device, but very handy. And it is important that if you're doing any, um, you know, if you're going to align your uh, finder scope, it's ideally recommended that you do it during the day. So it is highly recommended that you align your finder scope prior to when you start using the telescope at, at, at night. So um, obviously we've got different uh, other varieties. Now uh, we've got uh, this device. It is a this is a red dot finder. All right, you get a different one. This is a good quality red dot finder. Um, now there are basically. Um, what they are is they project a red dot on a on a flat plate, you know, flat uh, piece of glass on there, and basically it puts a like a, a crosshair or a target sign or or bullseye, I, um, and basically projects that. Now there's no modification on this, all right? There's no modification, but the good thing about this device is it gives you a upright image. It's not not upside down, and what you're looking at is uh, it makes basically makes life easier to line up. Now, for the guys who've got smaller finder scopes, 
Um, uh, to be honest with you, you can get cheaper uh, red dot finders, right, and if you're on a limited budget, I will actually sack the, uh, the, the your cheap finder scope and get a red dot finder because the red dot finder is a lot or much better than a small finder scope or unless you want to go for some uh, bigger finder scopes but the, the guys have got uh, finder scopes that is less less than daddy quote which is like a 6x30 and obviously 6x30 is okay but anything smaller it's not adequate at all so a red dot finder is probably the best upgrade and basically as it's little it's got an adjustment clip here so you can adjust the brightness on there and it has a, a little a slide on thing where you can change different uh, decals like bullseye, crosshair and all that. Um, also um, there's adjustment screws so you can adjust it from there to there, up and down, it's all labelled there. All right, so it shows you the adjustment screws but it's basically just like a fine screw. But I, you know, I, I highly recommend them uh, for the guys who've got um, rubbish uh, fiber scopes. Right, this is probably the best upgrade uh, if you want. And the good thing about um, red dot finders is they tend to keep um, their alignment accurate because it's all basically it's just set screws there, and they keep the uh, the alignment really well, so they don't tend to throw off a lot of auto alignment. Uh, the bad thing is, is uh, um, red dot finders tend to suffer from dewing up. Basically, there's moisture in the air, and what that does is it freezes up the uh, the, the sight glass itself. So, uh, usually on good uh, uh, good uh, red dot finders, is usually uh, for this one. This is a dew heater element around there, and it basically attaches onto the power to the four volt supply and keeps the uh, the sight glass warm, right, and stops it from dewing up. Uh, obviously, uh, as I mentioned about dew, um, finder scopes also dew up as well, so they don't have a dew shield. Uh, however, you can get heating band elements that will prevent it from happening. Or, if you're just using the finder scope for occasional viewing, you're doing visual, then the um, best, best policy is when you're not using the finder scope, and especially if you've got a go to system or whatever and you're looking at an object if you've got it into the main telescope put the, the dust cap back on when you're not using it all right and that stops the moisture from uh, forming up in there so basically cover it up when you're not in, when it's not in use and then start start uh, observing um, obviously for people that's got guide scopes all right um, again we have no choice in the matter you need to you can't just put a lens cap on when you're trying to auto guide now auto guide will, will become apparent when I on um, an later date on my next guides. Um, but obviously as I mentioned you can you have to have a, a dew pan heater to stop this from uh, uh dewing up. Or you can actually fit a, a, a dew shield, a bit of foam wrapped around there or cardboard right, to wrap around the, the, the tube itself and prevent it from dew from forming. But uh, I use uh, dew, dew heaters, they're a lot easier. Um, you just wrap them around there, connect the power, and you don't need to worry about you ever again. But that's particularly really, really important for um, guys who do your auto guiding. Right, now the best one, now as I mentioned about um, red dot finders, um, now welcome to this one. Now this is basically a red dot finder. But they call this a tar rod. All right. um, a lot of Dobsonian owners love this device. All right. This is fantastic. This is um, probably one of the best upgrades you can possibly have. If you're going to use it for visual, or for that matter, you can still use it as a, uh, an alignment tool for, for your go-tos. But this is probably the best um, device you can actually buy in your partner's equipment. And basically, it takes exactly the same sort of thing with the uh, with the shines a, uh, a reticle onto the main glass. All right. Um, again, it has its adjustment screws, so you can go up and down and all that. Uh, it has its uh, on and off switch, varying brightness. And the good thing about this is, um, this can you can disconnect. Um, from the main telescope, and you can attach it to another scope, provided you've got another base 
you just anchor it on there and you lock it in place, all right? And it's easy, you can swap it between your tip telescopes. Again, it can, tends to keep its alignment quite well, all right? So it doesn't tend to throw far alignment. Uh, but the good beauty about this, it has a four degree field of view. So it's a very wide field of view and you don't even need to um, look, put your eye right into the, into the tail rod. You can basically look at it at an angle like that, as far away as that, and you'll be able to aim the, uh, the telescope with this. Um, again, they're quite cheap to buy. You can pick them up for about 30 to 40 pounds with the bracket and everything, all the setup. Uh, again, they run with uh, two AA batteries. Um, again, the big problem with them is um, is the frosting up or the dewing up, right? And um, again, you can get an element that slides on there and heats it up, just like the, the red dot finder. Uh, or alternatively, um, you can buy a, a dew shield for it, believe it or not. So there's a dew shield. So when you're not using it, right, you can switch it off, and then you can just flip that over, and it protects it from dewing up. And really good device, it only cost me a fiver just to put that in there. You know, a quick upgrade, just replace the, the screws and then you've got your dew shield. Voila. And it also protects the glass so you don't break it or something. So that's a really handy little tool to have. But Terra Finder is probably the best one for the guys who've got slightly bigger telescopes with rubbish finder uh, scopes. This is the best upgrade. Again, uh, the tar rod also can be used for star hopping because of the four degree um, side glass on there and, and it makes things easier. So as you star hop to find objects, uh, because of the four degree field, you can actually measure the distance between stars, believe it or not. So fantastic device and I seriously highly recommend it to have anyone to own one of these. Alright, brilliant device. The only, the only trouble is though, they're a bit bulky. Alright, and uh, but they are light. They're not as uh, heavy as blue not uh, the 9x50 finders. So um, again, fantastic device. Okay, um, as I mentioned about finders, we're going to move over to the uh, main refractor with the fine scope attached to it. And basically, what we're doing there is going to show you how to line up uh, your finder scope. Right, to begin with alignment. Um, I've got me e I've got me ED80 uh, refractor. Uh, focus on a, uh, a a TV antenna, and um, at the moment what you can see is you see like a uh, you know the structure there, and it's central to the eyepiece. Now, obviously to align the finder scope, you know, you've got to position the uh, the telescope to the uh, an object like this. I mean, an ideal object like this. It could be anything. It could be a mass. It could be anything really. But um, the thing is, uh, the trick is is to use a the widest field eyepiece you can uh, you can get. All right, so you can be able to find the objects a little bit easy. It can be a bit tricky at first, but as you can see there, um, we've got the radio. We've got the TV antenna there and it's in view okay so the next thing now is we'll have to take a look at the finder scope right we got the finder scope and you can see where the crosshairs are um, and you can see it's a mile out um, usually um, if you're doing a setup like this it could be even worse than this all right and you might not even get the the field of view on there but um, as you see, we're trying to focus on the antenna, which is the centre part of this uh, little cap where the thin wire goes along. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the screws, you know, so that we get that crosshair in alignment with the uh, fine scope. So basically, I'm adjusting the screws. Do it nice and slowly. So if I go the wrong way, you readjust it. So keep adjusting it. All right. As you can see, we've got some crow trying to fly by and try to nosy what we're doing. <laughs> okay, and then quick adjustment. Okay, right. Basically, we're centre there. All right, and that's where we're looking at. All right, that's the fine scope adjusted. And then what we do is now we go back to the main scope and check again. 
as you can see now um, back to the main scope all right, and that's aligned up now I'm going to show you um, how the reticle eyepiece serves its purpose right um, with the reticle eyepiece as you can see it's much more accurate um, the trouble is though you know I'm slightly out and with, that's true with wide eye eyepieces is that they can't um, you can't get really spot on accuracy now the reticle eyepieces excels from this so they are uh, in a way really handy um, eyepieces to own so and I use my I use my reticle eyepieces particularly for that like, go-to alignment when you're doing star alignment you know, I always use the reticle eyepiece and it, it serves its purpose you know they're worth the weight in gold we can get them from about 40 to about 60 pounds for a, um, a, a, a you know, reticle eyepiece um, get the ones that are illuminated right so they're, they're good for star alignment uh, there's a sky watcher brand that you can get and um, that's around about 50 pounds I, I believe you know it's a 12.5 and this is what this um, uh, rescue at the moment it, the field of view is a bit uh, restricted but it's a bit tricky trying to align the, the camera in place so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to align uh, the telescope the main scope to the, uh, the crosshairs so I also use a, uh, a slow speed for your drive or if you haven't got them you can just use your slow motion controls and basically just readjust and you see how accurate it is I'm trying to focus the the image so I'll readjust the tracking again almost there And also we've got a bit of wind. There's the wind blowing in there. Uh, we're both basically spot on there. All right, and you can see how accurate it is. I'm trying to align with that uh, black dot in the middle. Now that's all already aligned. All right, so basically we're going to go back to the finder scope and then readjust. Okay, that's the alignment done, and the telescope's now ready for tonight's observing or imaging and it will make life just a little bit easier when you're trying to align your finder scope um, as I mentioned before on my guide on, on the setup we've just done now on the alignment um, this is the reticle eyepiece right, and you do get um, you know you do get ones with, without the illumination uh, device here but I seriously recommend getting the ones illuminated so that you can do the go-to functions of line up the bright stars in the sky for uh, your SIM scan or so, for your go-to telescope. But um, they're about, you know, they, they work extremely well and they're, even, they're much more accurate. It aligns your main scope much better than a standard wide field eyepiece. Um, seriously, I recommend you getting one of these, all right, without a doubt. So uh, that includes uh, my guide to the fine scopes and the alignment process. Uh, feel free to answer any questions on, on our forum. And uh, like I say, thanks again. Thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.